thank you so much, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for being, uh, for joining us this uh, evening uh, for a very interesting discussion um, that uh, we are going to have in the next one hour. The discussion is about, we've talked about a lot of, um, you know, the fallout of the COVID pandemic and the various scenarios uh, that uh, are there uh, that are emerging and that people are scared of or hopeful of, hopeful about, or they're seeing opportunities in them. The various ways people are looking at the emerging scenario. But uh, the, the most important guys in all this are the engineers. Uh, we have to take important calls on new technologies, new protocols that have to be implemented in a very short time. They don't have the luxury of time with them. Uh, they have maybe two or three months. So they, nor do they have the luxury of money. You know, I mean, uh, as we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic has hit the earnings of the hospitality sector like nothing before. Uh, so uh, it is a challenge for engineers. Uh, and it'll be very interesting to know how they're doing it individually in their hotels, uh, in their hotel chains, and what are the practices uh, that are being implemented around the world. Um, I see a lot of uh, actionable points coming out of today's discussion. So without much ado, I will invite uh, Mr. Sudeep Sarkar, the CEO uh, of India Export Mart Limited, the, the people who are behind these series of webinars. By the way, this is the 13th of our IHE 2020 hospitality sector webinars. So Mr. Sarkar, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the forum is yours. I welcome you to address our uh, audience. Yeah, thanks, Orishta. Esteemed panelists, friend of the IHE 2020, and members of audience, especially the members of Awesome, Pan-India Engineers Association, Hospitality Engineers Middle East theme, and Karnataka Hotel Engineers Association, who have signed up for today's webinar. Let me start my welcome address by wishing you all Eid Mubarak. On this auspicious day, my prayers are with the families who lost their dear one to COVID-19, with those who are recovering from the virus, and with our brave doctors, nurses, policemen, and women, and government employees who have been at the forefront of India's war on the pandemic. Our recovery rate gives us a lot of reason to cheer and hope for the best. And I pray that the first vaccine reaches us sooner than expected. I'm happy to report, as Shorizda also said, that India Expo Mart Limited, IML, or the brand name as India Expo Center and Mart, has organized 12 webinars as of now, including one first of its kind virtual product showcase, including for the hospitality sector. The response to it took us by surprise. We have averaged at least 1,000 plus registrations and an actual audience of more than 500 to 600 professionals and students from across India and 40 different countries per webinar. Today, we also got to know that we have already 15 member countries registration received so far. More importantly, we have had the who's and who of the hotel, restaurant, events and banqueting sectors talking to us on our webinars and the wealth of information we have gathered, which is there on the YouTube. It is like a gold mine of call to action. We have more coming in and I'm most excited about our second product showcase, which we have planned for Saturday, the 30th of May. On our last showcase, the range of product showcase extended from disposable terracotta pottery to UV heated cases for crockery and cutlery to prevent the transmission of microbes to contact-free dispensers and, and of hand, hand sanitizers, to entry antimicrobial material for furniture and furnishings. The idea is to inform our supporters in the hospitality sector about what is already there in the market and what is about to come in. Much as we are gratified by the response to our webinars, we know for a fact that it would not have been possible for us to organize them had we had not got the support of a host of well-meaning people and the organizations they hit. They include Chef Devinder Kumar of the Indian Culinary Forum, Chef Manjit Sengil of the Indian Federation of Culinary Associations, Mr. Anurag Katriyar of the NRAI, Mr. Amarjit Ahuja of the PPFI, Ms. Jayashri Nagaraj of the Professional Housekeepers Association, Mr. Firoz Nagvi of the Federation of Sweets and Namkeen Manufacturers of India, Mr. Ramesh Tang of the Delhi Banquet Federation, Mr. Anil Malhotra 
Mr. Ajay Khanna and Mr. Nirmal Khandelwal of the Equipment Manufacturers Association, Butermai, Mr. Rajat Pandey and Mr. Rajendra Mittal of Archie, Mr. Heman Sub of IIIT, and Mr. Sanjeev Anand of Hammer Publications. With this introduction, I must now welcome the panelists for this uh, webinar, the 13th webinar in the IHE 2020 Knowledge Series, aptly titled The Engineering Forum, Rewriting Social Standards for Sanitized Times. The webinar will focus on new hygiene protocols and products, air conditioning issues, water purification and conservation, kitchen and banquet, banqueting equipment, and laundry practices. Each one of these areas occurs critical importance as the hospitality sector prepares for the new normal. Our equipment, our eminent panelists over the next one hour would attempt to answer the following questions. What are the new demands on the creativity of engineers in the hospitality sector and the new technologies that will make their task easier? What are the hygiene and sanitary matters that hospitality sector engineers would have to confront before anything else? Second point, do hotels in tier two and tier three cities and towns, especially those in the mid and budget segments have the expertise to engineer the adjustments required for them? Will the pressure on bottom line spur an increased demand from managements for green technologies to reduce HLP cost? Can engineers therefore leverage the crisis to facilitate the greening of the hospitality sector? The last, is it possible for hospitality sector engineers to reduce their dependence on imports from China because of competitive pricing and aggressively follow a made in India procurement policy. Are we all, including the hospitality sector engineers, ready to go vocal for local? Well, in order to dissect these questions and come up with industry relevant answers, we are honored to have with us Mr. Bhaskar, Roof Chief Engineer, the Leela Palace. Welcome. Mr. Naran Swami Ramamurthy, Head Technical EHS and Projects, Fortune Park Hotels. Mr. Rahul Pravakar, Chief Engineer, ITC Grand Chola, Chennai. Mr. N. Subaraj, Chief Engineer, Ornard, Bengaluru. Mr. Anil Malhotra, CEO, HSMC Asia, and ex-hotelier and an old friend of the India International Hospitality Expo. Welcome you, sir. Mr. Anshul Gupta, Founder and CEO, Quick Clean Private Limited. Let me emphasize here that we seem to have embarked on an exciting new journey. From discussions, we have moved on to the search for solutions. From thought, we have taken the leap of faith to action. I now invite the moderator of this industry showcase, Suresh Bhattacharya, to take charge and get the experts talking. Over to you, Suresh. Sir. <clears throat> Thank you so much, uh, Shudeep. Uh, we are very uh, uh, fortunate to have a little, um, you know, uh, film before we start uh, our uh, deliberations, we want to give you all a little preview of what is going to happen at IHE 2020. I mean, with all these um, social distancing and other uh, health and hygiene protocols coming into play, how does an event like IHE 2020 take place? Uh, Radhika, uh, are you ready with the film? Yes. Please play it. One minute. Yes. The, the voice in the background is that of Radhika Rora. She uh, is the manager for exhibitions and conferences of IHC 2020. Uh, you will be maybe interacting a lot with her in person in the um, days and months to come. While the uh, film is being uh, set in mo motion, let me welcome Ajay Khanna, Mr. R. Kumar, Rajat Pandi, a lot of familiar names, uh, Mr. Naresh Shahani. They've all appeared in our panels earlier. Um, and of course, a lot of the people you may be knowing, a lot of your engineer colleagues from different um, hotels around the country. Well, here goes the uh, film.
well <laughs> that was a teaser uh, iit 2020 will be a virtual show and lot of um, expertise and technology is being garnered to make it india's premier online hospitality show it will be the first of its kind um, so please support it we bank on your goodwill and your faith in, in the product uh, this, this, i'm sure a lot of uh, sudeep you and your team have a lot of hard work ahead uh, we are yes, we don't yes. have uh, mr rakesh kumar the chairman of iiml with us uh, he has regretted uh, his absence uh, uh, but uh, he and sudeep and their team are really working very hard in over time to make iit 2020 a brilliant virtual showcase under uh, the under the leadership of our chairman shri rakesh kumar we have delivered two successful uh, editions of course with the help of, of the industry association he has been uh, there at the uh, you know guiding and taking it forward and this time it's a new experiment and it, the entire team is fully motivated by him to you know launch and get make it even a larger success for this time as well. fantastic uh, thank you uh, shudeep uh, mr anil malhotra let's uh, roll up roll out the proceedings with your uh, presentation uh, you have about 5 to 7 minutes um, that to be like the introductory presentation and then uh, we'll have all of you chip in with your comments it, let it be a free flowing discussion we expect a lot of actionable ideas to come out of it mr malhotra all right yeah. thank you uh, i'll just be uh, presenting side by side and uh, i think everybody can see the screen and uh, Uh, you know read the same also along with it so uh, you know all of us have been discussing uh, so much on on uh, on covid and its impact a- and i think for the engineers today it's uh, got to be a solution centric approach you know with the flights coming in the air today i think the hotels need to follow suit very soon and we are keeping our fingers crossed so june is just around the corner and as we were discussing uh, very soon the hotels have to open well the times are an unexpected and i'm sorry to say that we are not seeing the real impactful action with the right information to get the guest trust back so i think the guest you know he uh, my hotelier friends have to make the guest actually feel in their hotels as if he would have felt uh, when he were home you know and let me at this point of time say that uh, for uh, working for nearly about 10 years in the hotel industry it's been about 25 years from my side where i have been on the other side of the table so um, there are uh, there was too much of uh, you know conversation and uh, discussion on the sanitization and sanitization tunnels and a lot of ho- my hotelier friends uh, even ended up buying some but i mean was it safe because icmr later on came and said that uh, it's not good for the uh, you know for human beings to pass through it and there is no evidence that it killed the virus so there were you know things that came and things went off and uh, we have got new technologies where the dozen coming every day so uh, then thereafter you know there came the thermal cameras without knowing the impact of the external environment temperature the other day uh, you know a gm friend of mine he told me that uh, he was having a cup of coffee and then he went uh, to uh, a camera and uh, his temperature was absolutely uh, was absolutely different so now also with the, the heat of summer coming in uh, you know the outside temperature is going to play a very important part here you know so uh, for that uh, that matter even a guest who's coming uh, in an ac car i mean when he comes out of the air conditioned car his temperature is going to be very much less that is his skin temperature whereas his body temperature is uh, something very different so i'll be presenting some solutions that have been made keeping in mind the safety of the hotel guest and not really just the cost of the solution uh, mr malhotra can i interject for a minute yeah. um, uh, you know this uh, you know for a technical team uh, mr rothi banerji who is the president of awesome he just uh, made a comment that the voice is not very clear Can you please look into the matter, Tushar? Please. Okay. Is it uh, is it better now? I can I can move towards the. Uh, I think now I think Mr. Malhotra, we can hear you better now. You know? So there are a lot of effective uh, products available in the market right now, along with some uh, 
relevant questions that I'll have uh, for uh, my panel here and my very able uh, panelists who will be able to, uh, yeah, and be happy with, uh, uh, you know, giving me all the answers. So the bottom line is that are we happy with someone carrying an inaccurate IR thermometer, which may not be accurate just for, uh, it is just accurate for theatrics. So I hope I'm uh, being heard well now. Is it okay? Yes. In fact, yes, Jay, yes. Jay Jingren can hear you all the way from Vienna. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Jay Willkommen. Yeah, that's, that's an old friend of mine from my hotel. Okay. So uh, while um, uh, my first question is that are the hotels really investing in the right technology? Uh, I talked a bit about how purchases like uh, thermal cameras and UV solutions. So I'll uh, request my, uh, my uh, uh, companion here to tell us more about UV as we were discussing a little earlier. Uh, you know, uh, a bit later when uh, he's on. And uh, so, and the tunnels that are happening without the know-how. So when it comes to a thermal camera, it's not accurate uh, as it only measures the skin temperature and not uh, actually the body temperature. And believe it or not, I had uh, sent somebody from my office to the bank the other day and he was returned from the bank saying that this man has temperature because of uh, that camera that uh, was actually conducting it. And believe you me, he was quite all right. So, I mean, having said that, to tackle that problem, here is our first product. You know, this is an infrared and a thermal camera that measures the internal body temperature and not just the skin temperature. How it does so is via the human tear gland. And this is the first of its kind technology that gives you the closest to accurate body temperature. And above all, made in India. Can you beat that? So uh, as you see here, no human contact happens till the time the person's body temperature uh, is not normal. So when it's not normal, either you have a hooter or that, uh, you know, that red siren that goes up, you know, so you can uh, make out. So coming to my next question, do we think about only cutting costs while getting new technology? How about we put effectiveness, customer, and for that matter, even staff safety and priority there? Effective solutions are expensive solutions, but they would give results and prove to be beneficial. They keep guests and staff safe. Keeping the staff safe is so important because I have to run the hotel, build loyalty and trust in the long run, both not only from your guest side, but also from the, from the staff side. So another hot topic that has been talked about uh, is a lot of contactless dining, but is uh, contactless dining enough? How do we ensure that the entire guest journey in a hotel is contactless? That is what we need to look at. How can you impart all the information without human interaction and still increase revenues? So that's a big question for my hotelier friends here. You know, they have to look at their bottom lines, sleeping or I mean, uh, for, for two, uh, two and a half months, the hotels have been closed, no earning. Uh, you know, and people like us never got uh, any earnings either because we are dependent on the hotels. So uh, as we say, let's talk about when the guest reaches the reception and instead of uh, talking, uh, you know, taking the always reusable key card. I mean, uh, each guest is given the same key card. And what if he uses an app on his smartphone to conveniently unlock his room without even touching it? This contactless apps can be used to access the elevator or even other public spaces also. It's compatible with majority of hotel locks and can be easily integrated into your existing uh, hotel app too. So these are the things that we need to immediately put into action, you know, before we open our hotel or if the time is less, I mean, as we go on. Next, uh, I have here for you something to do with artificial intelligence and a voice assistant. Well, the name is Woohoo, but it eliminates touch altogether and does not listen to any conversations. You know, unlike uh, so many other voice uh, uh, assistants in the market or, uh, you know, what have you in your, in your own home today, you know, I think every home has it. So you know that you have a full data privacy, no, no uh, artificial intelligence helping you at the hotel reception ordering room service, booking a cab, giving you the Wi-Fi password, controlling the room temperature. And mind you, all this contactless only with your voice and the hotel management at the back of it, you know, because it keeps all the data there, can use all that data 
to customize the guest experience and plan their resources accordingly. It's, it's a huge data that this device can collect for you. While we also have another important uh, experience to consider, the in-room guest experience. Please imagine now, the guest was actually staying in his room uh, for, let's say, how many hours? Seven, eight hours. Most of it he was sleeping, uh, you know, uh, a business guest. But now he's going to be spending a little more uh, time over there, you know. So the guest might be spending nearly 10 to 11 hours in, his, uh, in and around his bed. What solutions do we have there? I, I know that, uh, you know, housekeeping says that, or the hotel says that it's only after 48 hours, 72 hours that they'll give the room again. But again, what the room is there, what all are you going to give him? So in the room, actually, according to the studies, your uh, TV remote is a hotbed of, for viruses. It has got feces, semen, urine, and so many other germs and other viruses. This remote is a product from the US. It's a plug and place solution. And the remote is compatible with over 250 TV brands. So you don't have to install another compatibility uh, you know, system to, to uh, you know, operate this remote. So uh, the remote can take sanitizers uh, and uh, keep itself very clean. It's a totally enclosed uh, you know, uh, body in itself. So, and on that note, I think, uh, you know, the know-how on a single, uh, if you just consider the mattress, there are thousands of people who will be actually using your mattress in the next uh, coming months. And the mattress will be a breeding ground for infections and viruses. You know, that's where a good mattress protector will help. Now, I mean, there are certain, um, uh, you know, companies who are doing some, uh, um, you know, some great protectors that are bacteria proof. And it is a great way to extend the life of the mattress also. It's a total bug proof solution also for this. So, I mean, le let me tell you that these are not all my, all my products that my company sells, but these are products that over a period of time, one has seen can be useful to the hotels to fight uh, the COVID, uh, you know, menace and make the guest so much more comfortable uh, in his yes. place of stay that he feels like home. So this yes. is, uh, you know, this is what I have to, uh, I have to say, but at the end, let me also tell, tell you that, you know, I think by now we all know that COVID is here to stay and right. we need to invest in the right and the most effective tech that will go the long way. Uh, right. During the conversation or otherwise, uh, you know, where uh, somebody had said that uh, if uh, I don't get my money back in the next three, four months, then it's not the technology I take. Sorry, my take on this is no. We have to look at it long run and we have to actually invest in the right kind of technology. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Malotra. Thank you. <clears throat> I think this was so informative, you know. Um, I, I hope uh, you'll be keeping a copy of this presentation with us. We'll um, you know, share it uh, across all our um, uh, you know, groups Certainly. that we reach out to. Yeah. Um, the, this is really imp interesting. Um, you know, so uh, I will begin with Mr. Bhaskar Masinani. You uh, said that today is your first day of receiving guests. Yes, that's and correct. And you're at 10% occupancy. Now, is this yeah. Delhi or Mumbai? Bangalore. Bangalore, okay. Yeah. But tell me, uh, uh, let, Bangalore. Let all, all of us congratulate him for that. You know, it's, <laughs> I think it's a big deal. It's, it's a fantastic, um, you know, affirmation of people's faith in hotels. You know, even yes. getting 10 ten percent coming in is a very very uh, big thing. Now, now um, uh, tell me, what are the uh, you know you've heard, uh, Mr. Malhotra? What are the various safety protocols that you have already in place? And what are the uh, ones which are going to that, that you're going to consider very soon? Okay, I'll start uh, from the airport uh, arrival status. Leela has launched uh, Leela Suraksha. Mm -hmm. We have launched the website. Our uh, chief operating officer, Mr. Anurag Bhatnagar, has made it clear: the Leela luxury has to be with the utmost safety. That's for the guests and as well as the staff members who are working in the hotel. Uh, and whosoever, whosoever associated in the building must, must ensure the safety and uh, remain uh, immune to COVID. 
Okay. Now, while guest uh, enters from the arrives into the launch, from thereafter the things start. Every car that goes to pick up the guests is sanitized trip on trip, including the driver. So it, the, a complete car has been sanitized. Once we receive the luggage, we sanitize it, then put it in the car. Then car comes where guest is inside, uh, is fa um, placed a safety kit, mask, uh, hand sanitizer, so on and so forth. There is no uh, paper and pen for any registration. There is a one online uh, message that goes for the guest to register so that the, the ease of check-in is being done while he's sitting in the car or while he's in the, uh, in the plane. So once he comes to the main porch, uh, the, the temperature scanning is done and the luggage is going to be sanitized there again, second time. And it's going to take a few minutes, but that delay will be communicated to the guests. And thereafter it is a contactless check-in as much as possible because uh, we, we, here we have a, a app a based uh, check-in. So paperless check-in, they, they need to give a consent. Even for the payment, there is a, there is an app that is been introduced. Which is which is being uh, trialed and test, tested today, so it's going to go on live, and uh, from there uh, the guest has been taken into the room, starting from the door handle to a bed, the telephone, everything has been sanitized and given to the guest. So thereafter, a prescribed like a butler uh, is been assigned to the room, so that the, the the staff members entering into the room is minimized. There's only selected uh, team members will enter the room for the cleaning. And uh, again, as team members have been briefed, there's a huge checklist that we need to follow in, in order to ensure the, the COVID preventive, preventive uh, checklist. Starting from remote to bathroom uh, fixture, everything gets sanitized right. once a day. And, uh, and you know, when you say sanitize, uh, are, you, are you using this uh, favorite? We have uh, tied up know? with Johnson Diversity. Okay. Uh, for the uh, chemicals that have been mm. uh, that have been supplied by them, and mm. we use them, uh, and uh, every at every touch point in the hotel, starting from the lifts to mm. door handles, your plumbing fixture, telephones, and the television, mm. remote, so on and so forth. Everything comes it mm. comes with that, right. Right. and uh, uh, the, the same checklist has been applicable for the in-room dining mm. uh, services right. also. As of mm -hmm. today, we are not allowed to open the restaurants and spa, and uh, so that there is adequate uh, preparation yeah. time is available today for next five days. Yeah. We, are, we are allowed to do, but inside the room, this is the preventive measures we have taken. This is this is applicable for even the staff members. A I, I think COVID I think your experience uh, is worth sharing. You know, when once after five days or ten days, once you have all the data. Yeah, even be, even a very tastefully done immune drink uh, has been welcome as a welcome drink has been developed by our chefs. So, okay. which is a, which is a, I, I would feel it's the one of the best uh, that uh, Leela has come out with, and right. it, is, it is a kind of a immune uh, enhancer catalyst, and it is right. it's also very tastefully done to our life. Fantastic, luxury. fantastic, very good. So, um, you know, um, uh, Mr. Prabhakar uh, Rahul. Uh, the question that in, in in our forums, everyone is asking about this repeatedly. How safe is UV technology? So you have done some work on UV technology and all the various UV devices which are coming to you. What is your take on them? Thank you, Suresh, for this question. Uh, see, uh, before we'll begin, uh, let me tell you that uh, UVC is one of the uh, ray in the electromagnetic spectrum, which we say uh, we have heard about UV in entire our life. We uh, we were using UV protection uh, uh, protector for our skin when we are out in the skin. But there are primarily there are three kind of uh, UV band: UVA, UVB, UVC. Uh, UVC has a germicidal effect, and UVC has been actually uh, stopped by our ozone layer, mm -hmm. by our obviously the natural protection that we have in and around the earth. So. Mm -hmm. Artificially, we are we are creating UVC light uh, in our uh, gadget that we are uh, looking at uh, in now every day. Now, to differentiate between a good product and a bad product, uh, there are some uh, certain uh, feature that you should be able to differentiate yourself. Uh, one example that uh, there are some scientific fundamental and there there are some common sense. So, science. Uh, let me begin with the science that the the family of coronavirus requires certain kind of UV dose at a certain time of exposure time, 
which is required to be considered on the corona family virus to kill it obviously at this point of time uh, covid 19 virus studies are not out uh, how much exactly the uv dose is required but yes the study done on the previous virus which is belong to sars virus there are around eight of them uh, eight of those so there are uh, uv dose available virus wise and where you can choose and select how much dose you need to uh, provide i'll give you a one more fundamental is like for example you consider your microwave oven uh, and you remove uh, the microwave microwave part of it and consider that as a uv box like people are offering these days to keep your mobile phone or luggage or you know this thing uh, the one of the fundamental is that the the uh, the the bottom surface so if you sub, uh, consider your uh, you are uh, putting a object which is like in a brick shape assume that it's like a luggage or it could be a document so generally a uh, uv supplier will tell you that my product is able to kill covid kind of viruses and i have designed in a way that it will take care of that but you can ask this simple question to him and probably 90% of the vendor will not be able to give you answer back that what will happen to the bottom surface so now because the other five surfaces like top or uh, right side lights uh, left side front and back has been taken largely by the uv lights but this six bottom surface is the key challenge when you look at uh, 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 as a common sense because if the the concept of uv is that it has to be there all throughout the bo body or object then only it will be able to kill it or uh, inactivate it so this is the one fundamental which needs to be uh, looked into uh, many uh, there are abhi uh, there are lot of patent uh, patent pending products which are coming in the market who have actually utilized certain uh, analysis like cfd analysis computer computational fluid dynamics to actually um, give a, a bottom surface but they produce a bottom surface in a manner consider like so for example in microwave there is a grill you uh, mm. grill is being used to you know hot up the heat up the uh, objects even that grill is not uh, sufficient enough to take care of your uh, 360 degree uh, sanitization because let right. me tell you with an example if we consider that grill width is uh, 3 mm in width and the size of the covid uh, corona uh, virus particle is 0.1 nanometer uh, 0.1 micrometer so if you divide 3 mm divided by 0.1 micrometer it comes out to be 30000 corona virus can go undetected if you are using griller as a bottom surface right so right. again griller uh, if you are putting your luggage or object on a grill and the, there is a bottom uv at the bo uh, which is being uh, kept uh, just below the grill to highlight the bottom surface right. again it's not a uh, right substitute because 30000 plus corona virus will go away so like right. you have heard about uh, that airport using uv scanners uh, mm. in their uh, uh, luggage uh, areas So right. the luggage is going. Right now you consider luggage is going, and they they are moving on the luggage belt. Obviously, the belt is uh, is ro is rolling and uh, with a with a rubberized belt, and obviously the bottom surface is not being scanned. Right. So you will obviously be left with the five surfaces which are probably being sanitized if the exposure time is accurate and UV dose has been given uh, uh, right. in the right fashion. So that is the. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Another challenge yeah. is that which is uh, there, which is very different. We have to differentiate that UV. Yes, the harmful effect of UV. So it has to be channelized, controlled in a manner. For example, that box which we are hearing and we are looking at, it has to be made of a a protection uh, uh, material, so that in case once the object is uh, is kept inside that uh, particular uh, UV box, there should not be any UV photon or UV rays coming out of that box. So, so Prate, what is the ideal exposure time, you know, or what is the safe exposure time for UV rays? It depends on the design of uh, the box, size of the box. Generally, it ranges from uh, somebody say, you know, five minutes. Somebody says ten minutes. It depends mm -hmm. on how much dose you select and what is the time duration. Right. Then that you calculate. So it's a, it's all mm -hmm. scientific. This thing, uh, the difference between so this, uh, is UVC safe, safe or not? Or from what I gather. it is not a full proof technology because you know a lot of covid viruses can go un undetected or unharmed yes in case uv is not being uh, 
penetrated in uh, in 360 360 degree fashion it has to uh, you know uh, projected one more thing right. that uh, uvc uh, people are buying uvc product but they are not buying as uh, a basic uh, pps like uv goggles see right. Uh, there is a difference between a normal LED light versus a UV LED light in a manner which is a difference between a water and a chemical. Right. So light is not a light. So that's why the the violet light, which is actually visible, is is harmful for your eyes if there is a a slightly higher exposure. Uh, if there is a uh, direct exposure to your eyes and to your body, uh, because it's a germicidal this thing, so it also can harm. So obviously the safety interlocks have to be inbuilt. Right. So moment somebody open the UV box, it, sh it should immediately trip off. So there should not be any direct exposure, and that has to be smartly yeah. done uh, with the state of art. You know, in fact, it reminds me like a lot of uh, people harm themselves with liquid nitrogen. You know, when it became very yeah. uh, popular, and you know, right, yes. uh, it's about the same thing. You know, you can burn your fingers, you can do a lot of things. You know, which uh, can be very harmful to you. And so you know, uh, let me uh, you know which. Sort of almost, you know, we heard about thermal body scans. There are question marks about them. We heard about UV C containers. There are question marks about them. So now we come to um, uh, Mr. Ramamurthy. You know, uh, what do you think in in a situation like this? You know, how does and a chief engineer make an informed choice? Also, as you were talking to us before the, you know, the discussion, before the discussion went live, what is it, uh, how, how will say mid-segment of budget hotels uh, introduce all these technologies when there's so much pressure on the bottom line? In fact, this year has been particularly harsh for them. How will you uh, reconcile the two? Mr. yeah. All right. Uh, let me answer the first question first. Um, hmm. There is a lot of information floating around, as Anil Malhotra had said, so many of them. And in another webinar, I you know, heard this word, the UV quacks. So there are a lot of quacks prescribing medicine. <laughs> so it is uh, difficult to make a choice immediately. You know, uh, what I'm not seeing is uh, the, uh, the major brands uh, are not in the play yet. Let us take you know, the biomedical uh, giants like GE or Philips or something, like, uh, people like that, they are not in the market yet. I wonder why. So uh, one needs to proceed with caution. Uh, we don't, uh, unfortunately, we don't have certifying bodies for these equipments. But other equipments have certifying bodies like UL, ULC, CE, etc. In this case, there is no certifying body yet, or at least uh, we are not aware of that in the country. Uh, the situation is somewhat similar to 2008 when uh, uh, during the after the Mumbai attack, there were so many companies mushrooming, uh, you know, for the security product. Every second vendor turned, uh, you know, they they became security experts overnight. Right. So fortunately, there was standards and uh, certifications already created because of the 2001 uh, the uh, uh, World Trade Center incident. So we had uh, a, we had a clear choice at that time. The clear certifications available, standards available. Now that is not the case. It's a it's novel virus. So we still don't know uh, the exact uh, mm. you know, characteristics and solution for it. Yes, it is emerging. I can see it is uh, emerging. The solutions are coming in. Mm. So uh, one should uh, wait a little bit to for the dust to clear and pick up. Like uh, Sri Malhotra said, it's for the long term. It's not for uh, short term. Right. Invest. One should invest for the long term. That is for the question mm. forward. Coming to tier two and tier three cities, uh, it's uh, totally a different story altogether. There, uh, you rightly said the the cash crunch is terrible as of now. Uh, hotels are really you know struggling to survive as of now. So it is uh, nearly impossible for them to make heavy capex investments right now. So uh, especially if you are uh, not a brand, you know, you are not associated with a branded chain, uh, it's going to be even more difficult. For branded chains, that is the advantage. You know, the corporate HQ will uh, give you enough uh, directions, sta SOPs, standards, 
guidelines and uh, they will help you with uh, 24 hour helplines they you know support with you, support you with vendors you know rate contracts etc etc so you have that comfort if you are associated with a brand like fortune so uh, unbranded people will have to uh, struggle a little bit little bit more mm -hmm. uh, not that uh, they are helpless they are there are enough professional bodies uh, you know giving uh, guidelines CIA, ASOCHAM, FICCI, etc. Your organization also. There are guidelines available in the public domain. They can go for it and uh, filter what they can uh, imbibe from that. So coming yeah. cash, uh, the energy and uh, whether it is possible to implement all these measures, whether the engineers are capable of doing it. Yes, there there are engineers capable of doing it. They need support to implement all those things. Uh, most probably. Uh, everybody will be starting with processes and uh, people-led uh, actions. And when we crafted, even we had crafted the Safe Stays at uh, Fortune program. When mm -hmm. we crafted it, uh, it was so carefully done that you know, we are not over overwhelming our people uh, down there. In right. the it should be implementable, and so that you know, they feel uh, they feel challenged, but they should not uh, uh, find that it is impossible to implement. So, right. kind of actions are being taken. Right. You know. Uh, so, um, I don't know if um, uh, you know. I need a little help from our technical team, um, Radhika. Uh, is uh, Mr. Um, uh, Rothin Banati still online? Uh, he had come uh, on the audience. If Mr. Rothin Banati is online, can you unmute him, Radhika, please? Uh, Radhika, can you hear me? Okay, no, no, the quick question I wanted to ask. Let me try. Okay, thank you, Niranjan. Uh, you know, the, the, the question I wanted to ask uh, uh, Rothin uh, Babu is that uh, is, uh, say, an association like Awesome trying to develop the protocols and standards, you know, trying to give you that expert opinion, the, uh, the opinion, considered opinion of all the uh, chief engineers. So that you have something to go by, you know, like all of you have come up with manuals and, uh, you know, detailed guides uh, to safety. It's, it's, it's uh, awesome doing something to uh, sort of put this entire matter in perspective and to guide you, hold your hand through this exploration process. And, uh, anyway, uh, if we, uh, I see he's coming online. Very good. Um, okay. So, so, uh, uh, without um, further ado, um, uh, Mr. Subaraj, uh, coming to you, you're also from the city of uh, Bangalore, and Bangalore saw, uh, has, of course, the hotel seemed to be coming back to life. You know? uh, is your hotel uh, operational, or is it still uh, under lockdown? No, sir, we are not operational, but we are taking care of the building. So, there are people inside. Just look okay, there the are people there, there are long staying guests, or, you know, people. There's no guest. There's no guest. Oh, there are apartments. Yeah. Okay, so now, uh, what are the uh, the safety measures that you have already implemented uh, in your building, and how do you think this can be extended? Uh, you know, once uh, guests start coming in. Yeah, as Mr. Ramamurthy mentioned, since we are under a brand, so we already have certain things already you know uh, with us. Like one is like a e check in. So we try to minimize the you know, human contact. Uh, there was a possibility before also. During COVID-19, we are completely going on that. So any guest who is a harness member who can actually uh, you know, do a e-check-in, how we do a web check-in for our aircraft. Secondly, we also have an option of you know, a digital key. Like Mr. Malhotra was mentioning about the digital key. So our hotel, we already have a digital key. And not only for the guest room, and also for the elevator. So if you are a honest member, once you want to book a room, uh, once you select the room, then you can request for the digital key. So our front office team, we can activate the digital key. So your mobile phone itself will become a key for you, which you can use in all the common areas, also in your guest rooms. And just to avoid, you know, now people are thinking uh, the COVID can spread through an even newspaper. So we stopped by newspaper much before COVID-19, just to save uh, you know, paper waste. So we are, uh, you know, uh, got a uh, subscription for our uh, press reader. So our hotel is already a reading zone. 
So any guest who comes check in use our uh, Wi-Fi, automatically they get a free access to the E zone uh, reading zone of press reader, and they can get all the magazines, newspapers on their mobile phone. So there is no need of you know delivering a newspaper again releasing a human contact. And for you know placing the food order, we are uh, displaying a QR code on the TV, so guests can scan the QR code and they can place the order. Again, they don't require to use their room telephone because we got something called Kipsu messaging system. So from their mobile itself, they can send any request or uh, uh, you know making the food order. It will go to the front office manager, restaurant manager, and food can be delivered. So these things are already existing with us. So it is very easy for us to you know sail through the situation. And uh, luckily, we re recently we got ISO 22000 certified. So all the hygiene standards are already implemented. People are practiced. I think this is helping a lot for us, and we are really ready to you know welcome guests back. Yeah. Okay. So um, <clears throat> as I can see that um, you you have got a process in place, you know. But what about technologies? Uh, you know um, these um, technologies that um, you know uh, Mr. Prabhakar talked about at length, or uh, Mr. Malotra made uh, uh, you know at the beginning. Do you think you need these technologies right away, or would you like to assess them before introducing them? Well, the digital key is already available with us. That's right. what I mean to say. So we are already right. using those technologies. No, but, I was uh, talking about the scanners yeah. and other things. You know? Scanner, as Mr. Ruma, we are just waiting for, you know, a lot of products are on the market. Still, right. we are not able to take a decision which is the right product. So we are right. just we are waiting for the right product to launch. Right. right. Okay. I also have a question to Mr. Malhotra. He was mentioning about the thermal camera. Right. So as an engineering, earlier we used to use a thermal camera only for our electrical panel. I don't know whether this uh, camera also will work for uh, human scanning. Uh, you see, uh, I was referring to, let me answer that question. Uh, I think uh, most of us, uh, you know, what we are seeing is that uh, 3,000, 4,000 rupee camera, which is uh, without any certification or anything which... Uh, gives you a, a plus minus six degrees, you know, of uh, temperature is no good a camera. And when it also comes to uh, just a simple thermal camera, that is what I was trying to talk about. It gives you the temperature reading of your skin, which is, uh, you know, which is not the right temperature because the body temperature differs greatly and it could be three to four degrees centigrade plus minus you know, between your skin and your body. So that is what I was referring to. Yes, I was reading about the thermometer. We also use a thermal camera for scanning, which is again costing around 2 to 3 lakh rupees for our uh, electrical panels. So yes, I was wondering whether that camera also can be used. Uh, for the human body, uh, I think uh, Mr. Ramamurthy can give you a little more insight into that. Uh, Mr. Ramamurthy, can you tell him something? See, uh, Najibutu, the, uh, how that thermal camera measures, they, it uses a laser. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, uh, it points a laser and an infrared beam onto the surface and then picks up uh, data from there. I am not sure whether it is uh, good for the human body. No, sir, that is not good for the it human is, body. It is better not to experiment, to. especially, you know, you don't point it at your eyes, etc. It is better not to take that kind of chances. Yeah, uh, Rahul, you had a point? Yeah, so uh, the fundamental difference, you know, between the, the camera that the engineers are using in, in the plant uh, for the electrical panel versus a, a 4,000, 5,000 rupees the IR gun, which we are, which is being used. Uh, and the camera that we are looking in in the future is that the in the good thermal imaging camera, there is a ATC function, automated temperature calibration function, which is there which compensate for the thing that Mr. Malhotra said in the beginning that if your guest is coming out from an AC car or somebody coming out in a weather of Chennai, which is 44, 45 with a high humidity. So again, there's a second parameter called, called as automated humidity correction. So there are four types of additional detection uh, and calibration mechanisms are there in the high-end thermal imaging ca camera, which are not there in case of the uh, plant room camera as well as in the thermal gun. So yeah. that's how the cost varies. So a normal, uh, the plant room camera will come in between one to one and a half lakh rupees, while the thermal image can can go up to double the cost. Yeah, well. uh, you know, Rahul, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you know, um, 
uh, you um, at the IPC hotels have also brought out uh, a manual uh, on guest safety and uh, security. And one yes. of the points you highlight is the uh, are the UV technologies you're you know, implementing, isn't that? Yes. So as of now, we are doing our pilot demo in one of our hotel. Yeah. And uh, findings of that hotel uh, will eventually lead to. So, as I said in the beginning, there are a lot of uh, fly-by-night operators who are yeah. coming with the uh, lot of yeah. UV quacks, as Mr. Ramuthi said. So uh, we have to actually differentiate. And as I said, the sixth surface, the bottom surface, is the key. Yeah. While you uh, and second is the uh, the UV protection, uh, which is inbuilt into the scanners, so that uh, the nearby humans should not get impacted so there are right. very few vendors in this field who have actually thought through uh, about this right right okay good so uh, you know, uh, actually yeah. uh, you know rahul so basically you know the, this camera is essentially a, a you know a ir plus thermal so it was putting both the technologies together right. and uh, when it went to the the tear gland that is probably the closest uh, and the most accurate temperature that you can get from a human body. Okay, so good. So that will also, that's why we need, I think, some sort of a central body to come together and say that, okay, this is what we think is right. This is what we think doesn't work, you know. Because uh, yeah, I think right, right now the jury is very much divided. That's right. That's what I was saying that you know, there are standards and certifications uh, in this regard. Right. Okay. So now, you know, Anshul, uh, Mr. Anshul Gupta, of, uh, you know, whose specialization is the laundry business, you know, he has been very patiently listening to us. In fact, uh, he was to go to Frankfurt for a major show to, uh, to uh, sort of, uh, you know, showcase his work, you know. Unfortunately, COVID-19 prevented him from going there. Um, so, but um, Mr. Gupta, can you, uh, I, I believe you're going to uh, uh, present a film and then you're going to have a little talk? No, I have a presentation. Uh, so, uh, okay, you have a presentation. Okay, yeah. fine, please. So, sure. Good evening, everyone. Uh, you know, so uh, I would take this opportunity to talk about two topics, like Mr. Sudeep Sarkar mentioned in starting, mm -hmm. uh, whether this situation will, you know, uh, uh, hurt our bottom lines and will force hotels to adopt uh, green technologies, you know, and will look forward to an engineering department to adopt such technologies. So I'll talk about that. And then secondly, the hot topic of sanitization, you know, and disinfection protocols. So I will, uh, you know, take up this point in the second phase. Uh, so let me just quickly share my presentation. Okay. So like I said, you know, uh, this situation, like obviously, you know, people talk about sustainability and there's always been a question uh, if sustainability ca can be profitable. And I think this is a good time when, you know, green technologies would make a lot of sense only if they have a right payback. So, uh, you know, uh, so like uh, every hotel would be now looking at to, you know, reduce their HLP cost, which accounts to almost eight to 10% of their total operating cost. So uh, typically, if you look at in HLP, you know, I mean, you have common lighting, you have HVAC, steam boilers and hot water generation, uh, you know, with anticipation of lower occupancies coming in uh, for next six to nine months. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the biggest task which all the engineers would have on their plate would be, you know, to optimize uh, these all four factors. Uh, and, you know, typically, if you look at steam boilers, primarily fuel your laundries. You know, 90% of steam generated in a hotel is used for washing clothes. So how, you know, unfortunately, most of the hotels have, you know, big boilers, 600 kilos or a one ton or 1.5 ton boilers. So in this situation, when you anticipate 10, 25% occupancy, switching on your boiler will be a disaster. I mean, like it's a killer, right? And we all would agree to that. So what to do? So I, you know, I've just prepared a small case study, uh, two uh, variants, one is with one ton boiler and one with 600 kg boiler, and just see, you know, how the situation look like. So uh, if you look at, you have a one ton IDR boiler, and if you have to operate uh, minimum for eight hours, you know, even you spread across, uh, you have two hours of starting time, and then, you, you know, your ironer requires a lot of steam, your washing requires a lot of steam. So even if you operate a one ton boiler for eight hours, you will end up spending 20,000 rupees per day if you are operating on PNG. And if you're operating on HSG, you will be end up spending 25,000 rupees per day. Are we ready to spend that much? You know, I mean, considering our occupancies will go down and we have, let's say, uh, an average 25 percent occupancy coming up. Uh, so, you know, we are proposing uh, and we have already proposed to a lot of hotels, which we already talked. 
uh, you know, uh, deploying uh, electric boilers. Uh, these can be installed within the laundry. They are very compact. Uh, they will help in reducing efficiency loss, transmission loss, uh, reduce operating hours. Uh, it will help in flexibility in machine operation. Uh, since you know you don't need to optimize it because it's not practical that you operate all machines at one time. And uh, with our calculation, the payback of this investment is less than three three uh, three months. So if you uh, have two of uh, electric boilers, small boilers, uh, you know, uh, with 75 kilowatt as power each. And if you operate like, you know, we did some contemplation discussing with the laundry operations. So typically, you know, you can reduce your spend per day to almost 5,000 rupees, 5,700. Which means if you talk about a one year uh, plan, you know, with this lower occupancies, uh, we can save almost 50 lakhs or 70 lakh rupees just on this cost. And, you know, the approximate investment to deploy these electric boilers would be around 10 lakh rupees. So it's like payback of uh, 51 days in case of HSG and 73 days in case of PNG. So like, you know, when we started this uh, session and we were having a pre uh, discussion, like I said, you know, any technology investment right now would make sense if it has a very fast payback. And I think this is one option uh, if, uh, you know, uh, uh, hotels with big boilers will adopt. Uh, and, you know, if you have a boiler with uh, uh, 600 kgs, typically a hotel with 600 or uh, 150 odd rooms, typically have a couple of, you know, 600 kilo boilers. Uh, so for them, the payback will be uh, around five months. But then it's a long-term investment because this will help you in any situation of low occupancy in future as well. And it will also help you in case of redundancy and also during boiler maintenance. So this is not, not just a COVID investment. I personally feel this can you know, go long way and this will be worth. A uh, few things about this boiler, since we represent Prevel, uh, it's an Italian brand. Uh, the unique feature about this boiler is, first of all, it's very compact in space. Uh, secondly, it has modulating heating elements which means a 75 kilowatt boiler will have 10 into 7.5 kilowatt heaters. And with a special technology called G-Tron, it automatically modulates between these uh, heaters. So in case you have a lower steam requirement, you don't need to manually switch off individual heating elements. So that's a very unique technology uh, in offering. And with this, you can sit back and you know, generate a lot of savings in your operation. Another unique feature, you know, a lot of hotels face the problem of hard water. So the heating elements are made of a special uh, stainless steel alloy called Incoli, uh, which is resistant uh, to hard water. Uh, only thing is you need to, you know, uh, uh, have that cleaning uh, infrequently, but then this is a uh, hard water resistant. And again, you know, it really works pretty fine in that. So this is was yeah. one perspective, which, you know, I wanted to share for optimizing your laundry operations and maybe, you know, generate uh, good savings or maybe, you know, operating the laundry efficiently. Uh, yeah. So this yeah, was yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, sorry. In, uh... Any question, Mr. Bhattacharya? No, uh, please uh, continue. Okay. Uh, yeah. okay, thanks. So uh, coming to the second point, you know, we've been talking about disinfection and uh, like Mr. Malhotra mentioned, you know, the ineffectiveness of these handled infrared thermometers uh, and, you know, even the thermal scanners. Uh, and also, you know, a lot of people have talked about using uh, uh, sodium hypochlorite for surface disinfection, be it coming from Diversi or some other brands. Uh, Typically, you know, there are a lot of surfaces which you cannot pour hypochloride or this disinfectant long because this will lead to, you know, discoloration or maybe damaging of those surfaces. So, uh, Especially uh, glass surfaces. Yeah. Glass surfaces are particularly susceptible. And even, you know, if you talk about stainless steel, it will react in due course when you keep on pouring in chemicals on it. So, you know, right. sharing with you one technology which I came across, it's ozone mm -hmm. disinfection. Uh, ozone has been proven to disinfect uh, again and kill viruses. Uh, so, you know, when SARS virus hit, Ozone was certified, if you Google, you know, to uh, be very effective against SARS virus. So uh, uh, these are, you know, some bottles, uh, ozone spray bottles, which doesn't use any chemical. They convert a normal water into ozonized water and can be a very good uh, solution for disinfecting stainless steel, even kitchen equipments and other surfaces, glasses and everything. And with no recurring cost, just, you know, the intake is water. This is certified from SGS lab, uh, Hong Kong and other certification also. Certified to kill uh, SARS virus, like I said, and we were discussing, you know, there's no technology which has been certified to kill coronavirus. But since, you know, it belongs to the SARS family, so the nearest technologies which we can look at is, you know, what has been effective on SARS viruses should be uh, able to, you know, infect. Again, you know, there is no proven technology or a foolproof system. It's all precautionary and whatever, you know, uh, processes and technologies we can put in place to have peace of mind and gain the uh, 
a client's or customer's peace of mind. So sharing a small video of this, uh, how it works. Uh, just one minute, I need to optimize for full screen. Yeah. Okay, so one question, um, Anshul. Yep, sure. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Please. Uh, I, I think you need to come a little closer to the mic and speak a little louder, you know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one, question, yeah, yeah. one question that is uh, being asked is what was the power consumption of, this, uh, of the electrical device you showed uh, when you were talking about, uh, you know, so it's, it's less than 100 watts. So it's a very compact uh, spray bottle. And it comes with an adapter which can be charged. And I think, you know, if it's a very common sense, like, you know, Rahul was mentioning, it's all about common sense as well. So, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it's basically ozonized water, uh, you know, which is generated from the, uh, 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 so basically it's actually HOCl, hydrochlorous acid, which is formed with the chlorine content of a normal water, right? Yeah. And by, ox uh, by oxidizing it, you create a HOCl, which is stable uh, carrier of ozone. And when you spray it, uh, it converts when it comes in contact with oxygen, it releases that O, uh, o out of the HOCl and then it forms O3, which disinfects uh, the surface. Right. Uh, so this is something, you know, which I feel is a very cheaper option. Plus it's a proven technology and can be used in long term. It's not a one time a COVID scenario. It can be used long term for disinfecting surfaces and your glasses and, you know, stainless steel okay. taps and surfaces and everything. Uh, okay, a uh, quick uh, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, there are some questions from our readers, you know, and uh, you know, uh, Mr. Ramut, a quick question to you, uh, because uh, you know, um, of course, I, I'm sure talk, talked about generation of steam, you know, <laughs> one of the big, uh, you know, uh, questions that a lot of people have about uh, hotels today is the air conditioning system. You know, the, is the air conditioning system a breeding ground for microbes? And if it is, uh, what we're doing now, especially in this scenario, to clean it up. Clean the, uh, did you say clean the duct? Uh, no, okay, yeah, I mean, I said clean it up, I'm, but I meant... Clean it up, all right. Okay. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. Clean yeah. up the system, uh, basically. All right, all right. Duct, okay. Starting with the duct, I guess. You know? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> all right. uh, see, the uh, first part of the question is uh, about uh, air conditioning being you know, a conduit or a vehicle for corona infection. Uh, I think that jury is still out. It's not conclusively proved or concluded that, uh, you know, air conditioning can be a carrier. But having said that, nobody would like to take any risk. Nobody would like to take any chance. Ishre and Ashre have already issued guidelines. Right. We have already internalized those also. Basically, we need to reduce the risk by dilution, okay, pure dilution. So you, the simple way is to increase the fresh air and reduce the recirculating air. Right. Okay. That is uh, easier said than done. The impacts are that the hall temperature, the space temperature is going to go up a bit and uh, uh, your uh, energy bill also can be impacted adversely. So we need to strike a balance there. And as and when the occupancy goes up, we need to increase the fresh air. So there can be some intelligence built into it. Or if people are having a good BMS, that is easy to you know manage with that. If you don't mm. have BMS, you'll have to do it manually. So by dilution, we can manage it to a great extent. But nobody can guarantee a total total uh, safety in this. Okay. Regard. Yes. And, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. There are emerging technologies there also, like uh, Rahul mm. uh, mentioned. UV is one of the systems. In fact, uh, many hotels have already, you know, installed UV lights in their FCUs and AHUs. Right. That was for a different reason to, you know, prevent mold from settling on the uh, coil, etc. That is uh, indirectly going to definitely help. 
plus the oscillation of rooms, oscillation of uh, areas, etc. That will also help. Mm. But to ensure a hundred percent uh, safe uh, uh, air conditioning, yes, we need to have some more technologies to come in. Right. Okay. Uh, very well put. Um, you know, um, Anshul, there there are some uh, people who want to know details about. Uh, uh, the so, ozone, uh, so, Mr. Yeah? Bhattacharya, allow me. I have a couple of more slides which I wanted to share. Okay. So right. Allow me. I'll just. This is a running time. Wait, wait, tighten. Yeah, just give me two minutes. I'll just yeah. quickly do. So you know, while we, um, uh, Mr. Malhotra mentioned the, uh, you know, accuracy of these thermometers and everything. So you know, as we know, even with uh, security scanning, in, initially we used to do with metal scanners and handheld. Mm -hmm. Then we came up with gates, you know, which are more accurate. So you know, I just want to show you here. Uh, so these thermometry channels are also available, which we are getting, and we are in talks with ICMR as well. Uh, to get these certified, uh, these are one which uh, uses infrared. There is there is a lot of you know one has too many different uh, op opinions on this uh, on these uh, tunnels or no no so this uh, is only channel. this is only thermometry channel where you scan and you have okay. a hand disinfection uh, hand sanitizer disinfection uh, module okay. available. Uh, okay, so okay. coming to that also, the second option is this which you mentioned rightly. A lot of people have questions, and yeah. here I would like to share you. So this is a disinfection tunnel. Uh, with uh, temperature checking and hand sanitization, and also a uh, foot uh, you know, the sole sanitization for shoes. Right. But right. I want to share, you know, the myth around uh, the banning of tunnels. So mm. I, you know, personally interacted with ICMR uh, doctors. So I'm going to just share, uh, uh, you know, uh, one screen, uh, which is the letter, the actual. Uh, just one. Uh, so this was the letter which was shared by ICMR, but a lot right. of uh, people have misinterpreted it. Uh, are you able to see my screen? No, I mean, we can't see any letter. Okay. Just one minute, I need to stop share and maybe reshare. So now, yes. So this was the letter which was, you know, released by uh, ICMR doctors. But then, you know, people read it, uh, apparently, the ICMR mentioned that as per WHO, you cannot spray uh, hypochloride or these, you know, chlorine uh, and alcohol based chemicals. They never said, you know, ban. So this was interpreted and then it kept on, you know, expanding. While WHO says you should not spray uh, chlorine or alcohol based uh, disinfectants, right? Have, yeah. If you have seen, you know, there's a video from Abu Dhabi airport, which is, which is getting viral. And you right. know, most of the international airports are deploying these disinfection tunnels. Only thing is you need to choose the right chemical to spray, which right. is, again, yeah. I would say is ozonized water, which is HOCL which is actually, you know, Rahul can mention even is used in a swimming pool disinfection, you know. So HOCL has been a formal chemical being used by hotels for disinfecting water and this, which is purely safe for human body, eyes and skin, everything. Right. So, and again, like, you know, uh, all the processes and precautions we implement are all precautionary. You cannot, why you are disinfecting bags, right, through UV. Right. Because we assume that every surface can carry a virus. Similarly, the clothes of people who are coming wearing, right, can be right. a surface which can carry virus. So these right. disinfection tunnels, if used with right chemicals, is a right. very good precautionary step which can be used, uh, uh, you know, for uh, disinfecting. So that's it. So I wanted to share right. this. And in the last, just uh, so you were asking you. So we have this uh, which are coming and which will be certified by ICMR. Uh, right. And like you said, you know, uh, you wanted how people can get more information. So here is my information. Uh, people can write down to me or, or you, can, you, can, you can put this information in the chat sure. room. You know? Sure, sure. I'll do that. Okay, so great. This is what so, the perspective yeah. I wanted to share. Thank Fantastic. You. You know, um, we are, of course, we have overshot time, but uh, I would love to uh, have uh, closing comments from each of the panelists, you know, and then uh, we'll ask Mr. Malota to sort of round up our discussions and, you know, uh, give an idea of what sense he makes of, um, you know, what we have just discussed. Um, so, um, Bhaskar, would you like to start um, some some parting thoughts? Yes, uh, I'm sure all of us have only one situation today. Mm -hmm. How do we how do we bring back the business, which is uh, whether luxury, mid segment, or any 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 kind of a business? But what is most important is to attach safety around the hotel operations. In, in any any aspect, whether vendors coming into the hotel, whether the supplies coming into the hotel, whether guest, uh, your staff. I mean, once once we open uh, 
uh, lift the lockout, mm-hmm. there is more chances of vulnerable points, mm-hmm. which is going to go grow. I mean, enormously that one even mm-hmm. can't imagine. But having said that, a strict compliance in each place will definitely ensure the safety. Uh, so, 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 so that also is, means you have to invest in training of your staff. I mean, not only it India. has got three three dimensions. One mm-hmm. the processes that we do. Mm-hmm. Second, the people that are going to adopt mm-hmm. or practice it, and third, mm-hmm. the awareness that we create mm-hmm. the guest to the guests along with the technology, the best technology possible. Mm-hmm. This is uh, these are the three things that are going to uh, implement. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the technology, I'm sure, what technology is going to come this month, next month is definitely going to go outdated in next six months, and something mm-hmm. which is foolproof. The best of the world class companies are going to come up with some permanent solutions. Mm-hmm. But meanwhile, we have to. It's the cost of doing business. Whatever is immediately available, we will have to take it mm. and then enhance it to the greater level. Right. So that is my so, thoughts. Absolutely great. I think, uh, uh, Mr. Prabhakar, uh, you know, any thoughts you know, you want to take off from where uh, Bhaskar left? Do you have a you know, yes? So, uh, <laughs> ITC Hotel has launched a Be Assured program, and under that umbrella, we have uh, identified set of technologies. I can see a lot of questions are coming on. on air conditioning and this mm-hmm. thing which mr ramurthy has uh, uh, explained uh, in detail mm-hmm. uh, suppose a scenario when uh, there is there is a question which i can see that a sympathetic uh, carrier no the guest himself is not aware and it is not been captured by by the ir camera as well and the guest is there in the lobby or he is dining in the restaurant now suppose that guest uh, has a has a uh, had a sneeze and if you if you sneeze the sneeze travels at a speed of almost 160 km per hour so oh. even if even if uh, you have uvc in your hus and fcus even if you are doing a thorough cleaning with a lot of productive a nanotechnology based disinfectant you would require a a substance somewhere in the air which will take care of, take care of droplet nuclei There's a droplet nuclei are basically aerosols, so which are there in the air. Uh, once somebody sneezes, it, 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 it uh, basically divides into two parts. One is droplet nuclei, which is smaller in size, and respiratory droplet, which is a little little larger, which will fo- eventually fall on the surfaces. So for the droplet nuclei, there are technologies which I can mention is that there are uh, there are technology which basically generate ionized uh, hydroxyl radicals, which eventually instantly kill the droplet nuclei. within few seconds so we are also testing trying out those kind of technology so it is one of the you know enabler to ensure that the uh, to ensure that there is a rise in confidence in the guest mind and yet uh, yet you are uh, not disturbing any guest comfort right that's right i, I think um, you know one sense that i'm getting um, you know uh, mr ramamurthy is that um, you know um, There is, is there is still a lot of haziness about these new technologies, you know. Uh, so, um, like, and as you said that, uh, you know, there are no certifying bodies which are looking into the matter. Also, so what do you do in this phase now? You know, say the next two, three months or six months, and right. Again, we need to go, uh, you know, by you know, strengthening our processes and enabling our people to implement those processes. you know people are going to play a very very important role so mm. in the in a spree of cutting cost we mm. should do some good people right you know there is a tendency to take temporary staff or by to reduce uh, manpower to take uh, mm. you know temporary staff and contract mm. that is fine but uh, a temporary staff who, who keeps changing daily is a source of risk compared to your regular people who, who mm. are and sanitize so those aspects needs to be kept kept in mind so we mm. play a very important role processes play a very important role in the short mm. term right right um uh, mr sabraj any uh, parting thoughts yeah, i have a question to mr ansul and uh, mm. boiler right so like okay. any other boiler does this boiler also require any license or approval from uh, government so these are electrical boilers so i think electrical boilers below and that's only 100 kilo capacity so they don't require any uh, approval but what would be the working pressure sir it's depend on the pressure right so it's a 5 bar pressure 
So it's in within the limits of you. Know. But still, I think it is still required approval from government. It's required IBR approval it's in that case. Approval. So, but IBR approval is for uh, I think uh, 600 kg and above, and that is above six bar pressure. The IBR IBR norms, if you look at, they require certification above six bar pressure, not below six bar. So I think that is been. Uh, Change long back. I think even one kg, one bar also they need a approval. That's right. That's yes, right. that's right. Yeah. So um, uh, I I think until there's something. Okay. Uh, maybe so I'll you maybe do check some homework on this. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure. And sure. do let us know. You know, once uh, you know. Sure. Uh, I I see. Uh, is Mr. Rotin Banerjee's uh, line all clear? Can you hear us? uh okay i i don't think uh, he can hear us you know? <clears throat> well uh, that uh, sort of um, this one book uh, question of course uh, you know um, uh, ms malotra you know um, i come back to a question that i've been repeating uh, off and on you know how does one uh, you know uh, develop uniform standards for the hotel industry uniform technical standards I know time has been short. You know, we have had only two months since we sort of seriously started de debating and discussing these issues. But what does one do uh, on the way forward, and how does one uh, bring some sense in this complex uh, web of information? We have been uh, going through quite a few of these, uh, you know, so-called webinars, and. Um, uh, there was one uh, which uh, FHRA had also done, in which one, uh, uh, you know, gentleman from the government uh, had uh, also indicated uh, on uh, standards and, uh, um, you know, uh, various uh, things that they were laying down. Now, the problem mm -hmm. is that I think all of us are going through a learning curve. Mm -hmm. so, Coming to that FHRA, uh, you know, um, Zevilar, interestingly, the point which the news media picked up was that uh, the disinfection uh, tunnels were not safe? Uh, I, I think that's what uh, the gentleman yeah, said. In, it's been going up and down since you were working on uh, or asking me about standards. I mean, right. let's let's face it that all of us mm -hmm. are together in it, and we are going through the learning process as we speak. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the government also is not laying down any uh, you know SOPs, and as you see that every hotel chain has worked on their own to put their own uh, SOPs, which they have also branded, uh, you know, themselves as X, Y, Z, you know, with the all uh, nice, fancy, reassuring names. So, mm. so I think it's, a, it's again, a question of time, like uh, Mr. Ramamurthy said that, uh, you know, the, uh, there will be bodies who will be, uh, you know, denoting all this, and it 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 will be firmed up only uh, after a little while. You know, till everything right. comes down. And right. uh, if you look at it, uh, you know, even uh, bodies. Uh, there are three or four different bodies, uh, associations of hotels, and uh, still uh, there is no single body which uh, has uh, got any definitive uh, uh, procedures. You know, right. uh, which, uh, has been documented, let's say, and stamped by the government. So uh, I think uh, for that matter, it is pertinent on my part even to say that IHE themselves is also putting up uh, certain, uh, you know, SOPs, which uh, along with, uh, I think uh, Mr. Rakesh Kumar has also, uh, you know, firmed up a, a total body consisting of uh, active uh, hoteliers at the moment on one side. And also on the technical side, there are ex hoteliers who will be uh, basically looking at what the uh, you know this body comes up with and then uh, it will probably have the uh, how should i say the uh, you know the 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 stamp uh, from the government also so i think we are also working on on that very closely with the i, I think that's that's a very very big step that uh, ieml has taken Yes. Uh, I, I mean, I am, you know, it is not only the provider of the biggest exhibition space in the country, is also acting like a responsible corporate citizen and, uh, you know, trying to uh, bring some semblance of sense into this whole discussion. And we are ha very happy to note that, uh, you know, there are uh, very uh, eminent uh, hoteliers who've uh, come and joined us. 
because right. it's i think for the betterment of, of everybody and uh, i must right. say uh, this is the foresight of uh, rakesh ji and uh, you know he has uh, uh, propagated this uh, particular thought stream and lot right. of people have joined in i think for those of you who don't know uh, you know my uh, panelist today i don't know if you've heard of it or not but uh, we have a very eminent uh, uh, hoteliers who are sitting with us in these meetings to put together something where, where we will get the accreditation from the government on this aspect to be uh, probably used as a you know as as a as a rule book for uh, the hospitality industry so we are working on it mm. there are a lot of people associated with it more than i think 30 40 people have already come in and uh, you know helping uh, uh, iih on iem and on this fantastic that's a, that's a wonderful piece of news uh, and on that um, uh, note i think um, there i i see that uh, the work of uh, getting um, you know what i say worry free technology i mean we are actually more than anything else we are trying to reassure people who visit hotels or who stay in hotels that is all safe and good that you know they can stay safe even when they are in a hotel or uh, you know or when they go out for uh, dining at a restaurant it's safe for them to do so so this feeling of safety will only come if the right technologies are not only in place but are seen to be in place and i think uh, that is where the challenge for chief engineers lie today uh, I, and you will have to do a lot of behind the scenes activities and like chefs and all you don't get television cameras you know following your movements you know uh, you know uh, you know you don't become celebrities but you are the real celebrities working behind the ship and a hotel is like a ship and you know you you're the ones managing it uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, coming and uh, for spending time um, you know one good sign of a discussion is that the audience stays on you know we have had an audience we just stayed on till the end um, of the discussion though we have overshot the time limit by about half an hour uh, so thank you very much i hope uh, all your good ideas will be implemented and uh, we'll have uh, you know a, a return to the good times as we had uh, we used to have we can go and uh, you know really let our head down in our favorite hotel or go and live in any part of the world in any hotel thank you very much sarish uh, before we just end i just yeah. want to say some two or three lines okay yes the last words are yours yeah the my <laughs> my panelists here they have got a very difficult uh, task you know they already uh, i mean staying in the boiler rooms and uh, you know back of the scene it's 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 not a very easy uh, place to really be in you know right. where uh, front of the house is always the glamour but i i just need to say that you know we've talked about all these products and uh, you know consider that uh, the complete uh, journey of the guest we've taken in a hotel so i i just like to say that let's uh, dig a little deeper and actually ask each other you know some very difficult questions to get the right information and not just go for the cheapest uh, tech available you know we look we need to look for effective solutions that are safe but uh, you know and also are cost effective only in the long run i would say that is how you would be able to build a customer trust and loyalty and really stand out in the market and not to miss you know look after the staff also as Thanks. Uh, you know that that is going to be a very uh, you know very important thing also for uh, i think hoteliers i think very well said you know i think the biggest investment that can be made today is to regain customer trust and confidence Absolutely. and uh, i think no investment is bigger than that and in, if that i mean uh, you know people talk about capex i call it call this uh, humex you know this uh, expenditure on human trust you know Yep. Uh, so um, uh, on that note, uh, let's uh, th- let me thank all of you, uh, Mr. Subbaraj, Mr. Bhaskar, Mr. Prabhakar, Mr. Ramamurthy, and um, Anshul for s- s- you know seeding some nice thoughts in our in minds, and some nice uh, new ideas. And uh, Mr. Anil Bolotha is always a pleasure to listen to you. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, we, we are all um, we'll have some very interesting. Um, uh, Meti coming out of IEML on the way forward for new technologies. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, God bless.
Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Pleasure. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sarish. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Sarish. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.